Welcome, YouTube friends. All my sewing friends are here. I can see you. Welcome to Bluegrass Dreams to Sings. How are you today? You are coming over, correct? I'm not doing this show alone. Welcome, everybody. This is Cheryl. Isn't this so cute? My grandson brought me this little sheep. It's a little finger puppet knitted from Nashville. Now he had forgot he had bought this for me and he was over this past week and he says, what you doing grandma? And I, well, actually he calls me emo. He's what you doing emo? And I said, well, I am knitting on Ampa's socks. He called his grandfather Ampa. That's my husband. And I, I, he asked me about the wool and he said, oh, that's really soft. And he says, wait a minute, I got something for you. And he runs out to the Jeep with his mother and he brings in this little sheep, this little finger puppet. And he says, that's for you. And I thought that was just so precious that he brought it. So I told him it was gonna be the beginning of this video. So he knows about that and he'll be looking for it. But anyway, um, he, then he asked me after he got back about making him a pair of socks out of the same wool. And I think there will be enough of this sport weight wool to make him a pair of socks, which would be fantastic. And he could wear them with his rain boots or his um, snow boots. I don't think we'll have any more snow this year, but they should probably still fit him next year because he's going to be five and they kind of slow down a little bit on the growth. And uh, But we'll, you know, uh, if, if they don't fit next year, I'll just make him another pair, you know? because socks knit, they don't, socks knit up pretty fast for a child. Now, I did get a couple of makes made, but before we get into that, I have to apologize. I know I said I'd try to put a video out last week, last Friday, but sometimes life just happens. <laughs> um, my person that helps me with my mother, she needed to take some time off. She's still off this week. Uh, had a death in the family, and she just needed to be away and, and, uh, and help with all that. So I had uh, a couple of specialist appointments that my mother had to go to, and then, of course, we had this wedding to get ready for, so there was just no way, no way that I was going to get that video made. And I should have known that to begin with, but I just thought, you know, I'm always thinking positive. It'll get done. It'll get done. <laughs> it didn't happen. So anyway, but I did get a few things sewn before I left, and then I finished a few things after I got back. One of the things I got finished before I left was my style art, uh sweatshirt, and this is the Sunny Knit Top. I made mine out of a cotton fleece, um, or knit fleece, like, you know, this stuff. I bought this at Joann's. Um, the back seam is done first, then you sew your shoulders together, your front and back shoulders, and then you put in this. Now, the only pictures that you get on this pattern directions is for this finishing for the neck edge. And then you're listed, there's seven steps. So the pictures are above your steps. One thing that before I started sewing was, I thought, what is the seam allowance on this? And I was looking and looking, finally found it, and it said quarter inch seams allowance. And I thought, well, this is a serger project. I'm not making this on a saw machine. So I surged all my seams as I went. And so you add, after you get done with the front and back shoulders, then you sew these bottom pieces on to that. And the last thing that you do is you add this uh, sleeve here and then you serge this whole side seam. Then you can do your top stitching, which is what I did last on the sewing machine. Um, this seam here on the sleeve will hit you about right here. Uh, some people might find that bothersome. It doesn't bother me at all. And it's nice and roomy and it's going to be warm. We had some really cold days here and I would wear it outside and, and I was very comfortable. I'm, I'm not one to wear a lot of jackets, but if it's cold enough, I do wear a pretty heavy coat. I've got a black coat I showed one time and so y'all saw that, but I, I will wear that coat. So I got that finished pretty quickly. I, I made it in an hour from start to finish one hour once I got it cut out. Now then, uh, another thing that I made this, I wanted to make this for the wedding. Rebecca Taylor pattern is a Vogue pattern 1367. And here's the line drawings to refresh your memory. Uh, the gathers here, there's gathers here, the little tiny cuff. This yoke is put together first, then you bind it off. 
Um, this was really easy. I was very surprised because I was kind of expecting it for some reason to be hard. I guess because I, I was thinking that yoke would be hard, but you can see the top stitching I did. You can see the uh, binding. I sewed it on, folded it toward the front, and stitched it down in place. Um, the little cuffs, they've got kind of a big snap there. I had some of these nice size snaps that I used. And um, the only thing that I would change about the pattern is the lower hem area. I would make this at least two inches longer just because when I lift my arm, it raises up above my waist and I have some skin show and I, I don't like that. So I have to wear a little teddy underneath this one, but the back is a little bit longer than the front. Maybe even make them match, be the same length and put like one of those uh, like little vent like you get on some shirts. Um, do that, just totally change the hem. The hem was a little complicated because of the little curved edges. One of them looks a little pointed. Um, but I did some serging to finish the seams, some flat belled seam finish. It just depended on how I think was best, but nothing is going to fray on this, and this will fray. Now, when I first laundered it, I noticed the sizing did not completely come out of it. The, these gathers were kind of rough, but, well, not rough, but stiff still. So when I got finished with it, I washed it again. I always hang it to dry and I washed in cold water just because I didn't want the color to fade. Even though it's polyester, I'm still afraid it'll fade. <laughs> and so anyway, it still seemed like the gathers were a little stiff after the second washing. When I got home, I decided, well, I'm gonna wash it again in the cold water, hang it to dry, and I did that, and I noticed that all this is really softened up now, so it has a nice little flow to it. So, finally got all that sizing out of there, so I really, really like this top, and I definitely would make it again, definitely. Now, this jacket, I made, I wanted to make that jacket from McCall's pattern that um, is kind of loose fit. Here it is, that jacket right there. The jacket and pants, according to the back of the pattern, calls for crepe, chalice, and crepe back satin. Well, I had this cotton blend linen, uh, linen and cotton blend fabric, and I thought, I really want to make that jacket out of that. This is a designer pattern as well. It's uh, Kali Ali. And so anyway, um, the first thing you do is work on getting this felted pocket in on the front. So I had done a felted pocket before using a Vogue pattern and they always said, sew the entire rectangle. Oh, here it is, sew the entire rectangle that you've copied off from the pattern tissue. Well, this one just wanted you to do just the ends, but I sewed all the way around that as well as on the lining. I did, sewed all the way around. So I, I did all that, put my welt in place, Stitched, there's where you stitch it in place. Then I laid this on there, stitched it in place. Went to, I cut it, went to press it, and that's what I realized. Instead of my pocket being this way, it was this way. It was going upwards instead of downwards. So I had to take it off, and I was kind of disappointed. But it's a good thing I stitched all the way around because that kept this linen from stretching, and I, I know that it would have, probably stretched and been out of shape and it wouldn't have gone back in very well being that the, the hole was already cut. So that saved me doing that step. I was a little exhausted after that. So I came back to the jacket the next day and I put the pocket in on the other side and so helped me. I went to go cut it and I noticed I had sewed it upside down and I had checked two or three times and said yes that's right and went and sewed it down and so I took it off and I flipped it around now again I did stitch all the way around that uh, you know securing it down on both pieces before I put them together so it was easy to take it off and when I turned that one to the wrong side it pressed down nice and flat I had a little trouble with the first one and I it probably was because I'd already cut it but the second one went in really, really good. Another thing I changed, and one regret, we'll talk about that in a minute, 
One thing I changed with my pocket here was I had read a tip years ago and stored it right here in my brain to take a piece of little cotton um, tape, twill tape, and attach there and there, this is in the seam, so that your pocket, when you go to put your hand in, where's the pocket? Here it is. When you go to put your hand in, it's gonna slide right in because that pocket is held in place with that piece of twill tape. That's a really, really good tape, tip, and I'm glad I did it. But I have a nice finish on the outside. My one regret, why did I serge this in white? I, I know better than that. Well, now I'm thinking, I think I'm gonna take a sponge, probably a makeup sponge, clean one, and I'm just gonna lightly take a blue dye uh, that I'll have to dabble that sponge to get most of it off and just lightly go over those threads and hopefully I can darken them just enough that it's not gonna bother me so much. Um, I do need to still put my button on the sleeve so that I can take my little tab thing here and I can button those up to have that look that I'm wanting. It fits great, I'm very pleased with it, other than, you know, my little goof up. <laughs> but other than that, I'm very happy with this pattern. I would probably make it again, but not sure when, but I probably would make it again. Uh, on to some things, I wanna make me some dresses. You know, planning for spring, I want to get me some dresses made. So one of the dresses I plan on making is this Butterick 6653 this pattern here. And the reason I, I like it is because of the way this back is done. I think that's really kind of cool. It calls for stretch knits. So I have this that I pulled out of my closet thinking, you know, that might be okay for that. And um, if I wanted to like take this lower part and lengthen it, but I know I don't have, I have enough to do probably this view here. I could make this view if I could find something in solid that's kind of the same thing and pull one of these colors out. So I might do that. But if I hold this out where you can see, this is the cross grain. I've got quite a bit of stretch in that. So that's, that's really nice. And I got this off of a remnant. I bought it a couple of years ago and I've just never done anything with it. If it's not gonna be a dress, it'll probably end up being a top. But I really don't wanna make any more tunics. I'm kind of tired of them. I want to get into, you know, I made this little top here. Yes, it comes down a little bit longer. I, I think I lengthened it. But, you know, it's just different from being in a tunic. Um, another little shirt I pulled out was this McCall's pattern. I really like this. I'll make the solid view and probably these sleeves. I might make this. I don't know. But I think I'll have enough of the pink left over that if I could find a print... I could put the two together and make that top as well so I get two shirts. Here's the line drawings on that as well. This is McCall's 8001. And so the pink that I have for it is a pink rayon. So it'll be very soft and flowy, just like what I've got on, because this is a best coast, but rayon and best coast are basically the same thing from what I've heard. So again, if I can find a print, I can take the leftover from this and end up getting two shirts out of that pink. Now I have this blue, kind of navy blue linen. This here, similar to the one that I made of the light blue linen. And I think I've got about three yards of it. So uh, that's enough to make one of these shirts. So I pulled these two patterns. Now, the sleeve I like the best is this one here. Got that little detail there. I, I don't mind the tie part as long as it overlaps uh, enough to please me. Um, so and I, I don't think that's really gonna be a problem. Now this is kind of tunic style, I guess, but it's at a slant and I like that those kinds of lines. Uh, one of these, call, I think it's this one because it's got an extra tie calls for just a little bit more yardage, but I don't really think it's going to be a problem. Um, my collar, I like this shawl collar a little more than I like that one. So that's probably gonna be that blue fabric. Now, if for some reason I don't think I can get it out of there, I have a backup plan. This little boxy shirt here, but then I wanna make these pants because they're just a drawstring <laughs> to wear with it. and. 
so there's that pattern. This is uh, 1347. It's also Vogue, and it's by Ralph Rushi. I think that's how you say that, or Rushi. So that's going to be one of those. Now, decision time comes down to, I want to make this dress. Now, this wouldn't take very long, but I'll probably line it. This Butterick 6850. And I really like the princess seam lines on that dress. Here's the line drawings, although I don't think you can see them very well. And I also like this jacket. Now, I know this is similar to what I just made. You're thinking, why, why? Well, they both were put out about the same time. They both were designer patterns. This is Donna Karen. And um, 1346. It's gathered a little more across the back. It does have top stitching, but I'm not dealing with a welt. This is a side seam pocket. So that kind of saves me there. What I do have, I'll show you. Hopefully this is the right one. Wrong one. Is I decided to pull this out to look at the pattern pieces. You know, you have this little grid here, picture. And I went, oh my goodness. If I don't do the bar tacks and overlap that exactly, those big dots, this could really be a problem sewing and getting that correct. And I think this is like the shoulder area where this collar is. I believe that's where all that is. This pocket is out of the fa fashion fabric. This is the lining fabric, other side of the pocket. So this will be one of these fabrics for sure. I'm not sure which one. So I want to make this one and I want to make this one. So I have two linens left over out of, you know, what I bought recently, not recently, but in the last year. I have this peachy one I'm thinking do the jacket, but if I can't, I'll do that dress. I'm pretty, pretty sure that this teal will be the dress. And the reason I say that is because I bought this designer linen when it was on sale. I only got a yard. They said it would be enough to make any kind of shawl. I wanted them or a little wrap, and I thought that would be kind of pretty to put those two together. So I know that the tail will probably be that dress, and the peach might be a second dress. <laughs> we'll just see. If I can get the jacket, I am going to do the jacket because I've always wanted to make that. And that pattern, again, 2017 is not that far back, and I do kind of like that Lucy little jacket. Now, of course... <clears throat> I don't have a dress to wear with this either. <laughs> so I'd still have to buy another linen print or do a white dress or something to wear that with because it is kind of light. So and I've got a lot to think about on some of these more complicated things, but the things that are a little easier, that's what I'll make first. I'm gonna start cutting out Saturday and Sunday. I'll start sewing on Monday. So my goal is go to Let's Sew on Saturday, see what I can find up there to bring back to try to do some more dresses. I've got things pulled that I can do tops that are not tunics necessarily. And uh, I need to get a couple of buttons and I wanna look at her trims and I'll do some little pictures that I'll attach to my next video of my trip up there because it's a fantastic store. I am very, very pleased that it's a driving distance of a day. <laughs> it's two and a half hours to get there, maybe two hours. I can get there. But anyway, with that said, it's time to sign off. And for Oliver, I want him to see his little Latin friend. We want to say so long for now, and we'll see you next time. And don't forget to hit subscribe and like. And it's very much appreciated. Bye, Oliver. Bye.